Hi and welcome back to my channel. Shooting inside today. I'm in my leather workshop. Been working with leather 20 or 30 years or thereabouts. And that's pretty good when you have an axe that doesn't yet have a sheath. I've been using this uh, Rinaldi America for some time now, carrying it in my sling on my back up in the forest. And Well, sooner or later I guess I will cut myself or cut my clothes. So I'm gonna fix that now. And uh, you can take the opportunity to learn from how I make my leather sheets. So I just started by making a really simple sketch of the rough design of the sheath and the function with the strap behind the head like that. And then I started making a template. I used the kind of paper you put on the floor when you are redecorating or painting. And I found a store that has this paper but without the plastic cover that it usually has on one side. So if you can find that, that's the best for templates, I think. I put the axe on the paper, traced around the axe head, knocked the handle out. That you can do with slip fit axes. Then I flipped it up, traced the other side of it so I get the thickness of the steel as well and then flipped it over and traced the other side of the head because if you don't get that little wedge shape there that is the thickness then uh, the piece of leather you cut out to make the sheath will be a bit too small. Then I just estimated how much material I needed in front of the edge. Try to imagine how it slips out here at the heel just the shape of the leather, really. And I only need to draw this on one side since it's a symmetrical shape. I will just fold it along the center line just with a ruler of some sort. I can use a scratch all to make an indent in the paper, then it's very easy to fold it nice and straight like that. And now I just cut it out. I use one of these knives. I have some fancy knives for leather working, but I more or less always come back to these simple things because I don't need to sharpen them. That almost looks like an axe head, hewing axe. Anyway, this is the first piece I'll cut out from leather, the main piece that will make up the sheath. I have a nice piece of leather here. I think it's veg tan but I'm not sure. It's about three millimeters thick I would say. I'm not sure how you measure that in the imperial system but yeah it's about the same thickness as regular belt leather really. So I'm gonna try and put the template on it to get as little waste as possible. Before when I worked a lot with leather I restocked all the time with materials. Now I don't so much anymore so try to save up as much as possible and not waste material. Well I did that when I earned my living from leather crafts too but it's even more interesting to me now when I don't really have the same excuse to buy more material all the time. I use a scratch shawl to mark and I do it on the grain side not on the flesh side. Some people flip it around and mark with a pen on the flesh side but I've come to prefer scratching with an awl on the grain side. This is the easiest way to break a section off when you need a new sharp tip. My fiance hates when I do that, but that's actually a professional technique. You usually get the best cut if you don't try to press all the way through the leather at first go, especially if you work with thick leather. This leather isn't that difficult, but I don't use too much force anyway when I cut it. That uh, can just make it more difficult to actually follow the line nicely. I'm 
Better to come back in a second time and cut through the last little bit if you don't get it on the first run. And there we have it, and that just folds over like that. to uh, form the sheath. Yeah, gonna be great. <sighs> it's Friday here and I don't work with any really dangerous tools. Now since I'm not gonna make more than one sheath from this template I can cut away the margin in front of the blade which will then form the template for the welt and the welt is uh, the extra layer that will be put in between here and that's what's going to come in contact with the sharp edge of the axe stopping it from uh, cutting the seam that holds the sheath together I'm just cutting this piece away. I can lose that. And now there's the welt template. I'm not going to use the same leather as uh, for the rest of the sheath. I'm going to use this. It's uh, slightly thicker and slightly harder. So it will stop the axe edge a little bit better. I think I used this for soles when I made medieval shoes. It's a bit tougher than this, and this is easier to fold in shape. I'm trying to lay this little template out to get as little waste as possible, even here. And then it's the scratch all again. There we have it. And I'm just cutting this out. When you are um, cutting an inside corner in leather, you always start with the tip in the corner and cut out and away. Because if you don't do that, if you cut into the corner, since the blade is uh, angled, you're not cutting with the edge straight. You will cut past the corner and make a nick in the piece you want to keep. So start with the tip in the corner and cut away. Pro tip that saves you a lot of grief. There's that little piece, and that will go here. Like that. Now I'm gonna soak the main part of the sheath in this little tub of water I put on the table here. The water is warm, but not too hot, because if you get it too hot, then uh, you start ruining the leather. I do this to uh, be able to shape it easier when I fold it. And while I wait for that to soak, I'm going to uh, cut the fastening strap from the same piece of leather I cut it from using a strap cutter. There are different kinds of strap cutters. I use this simple wooden one. I've had fancy ones made from steel and brass. I found this easier to work with, so I sold those high-end tools and just stuck with this. It has a small replaceable blade in here and you set the width like so, locking it with a screw. I'm gonna set it to 16 millimeters. I think that's a suitable width for this strap. That's about three quarters of an inch, I think. And I already have a straight edge on this piece of leather. 
Otherwise, I would just make a straight edge by cutting along a ruler. There's my strap now. Great tool if you want to work with leather. Can't do without this. The leather's been soaking a little bit in the water now. It doesn't need that much, but now it's very easy to shape. So I'm just gonna fold it, pinch it a little bit. So I'm pinching it in the beginning here closest to the edge where the blade is thinnest but I don't pinch it all the way back because this last little bit I want to be a little bit more rounded and that uh, follows the shape of the head a little better too because it gets wider back there and doing this when the leather is wet makes it retain the shape when it dries. Next step in the making of the sheath is to glue the little welt in inside of the fold but the leather needs to dry up a little bit before I do that so uh, I'm gonna go upstairs and have some dinner and come back in a little while. That was dinner. Mashed potatoes and a great stew. I put the sheath in some old newspapers to help it dry out slightly while I was away eating. Of course it's not dry yet but it's not as wet as when I left it. This will have to do. It's a bit too long now because of the fold. There's a little bit of it sticking out so I have to Cut away a little piece. Looks great. The glue doesn't stick to the grain side. It's too smooth and hard. So uh, I have one of these metal brushes to roughen up the surface. It also is very effective roughing up your fingers if you're not careful. I have first hand experience from that. <laughs> first hand. Ah, sorry about that. A rough sandpaper will also work if you don't have one of these. To apply the glue, I never buy brushes, I use small off cuts of leather and just uh, cut a bevel on them. That makes a great spreader and uh, makes good use of small pieces of waste as well. This is a contact cement for shoemakers, so it's a little bit of better quality than the usual stuff you get at the hardware store. It smells about as terrible. German brand. Klebefest, it's called. Sticky party, perhaps, I don't know. I guess you don't translate names. The usual practice when using contact cement on leather is to put one thin layer on first as a primer. Let it dry up a little bit and then put the second coat on, which is uh, the adhesive layer. I'm doing the same thing to this piece here, although it is still a little bit too moist perhaps, but yeah. Let's see if it works or not. Since I'm also stitching it together, it's not the end of the world if the glue joint fails a little bit. I'm not aiming for a waterproof seal here anyway. And then the other side of this. Now I have glue on both sides. How will I put it down now? I'll try to balance it on the edge. Yeah, that seems to work. I'll give it a few minutes and then put on the second layer. 
I've applied the second coat now and given it some time to dry up. But I didn't bother shooting it because it's only marginally more interesting than watching paint dry, really. A little bit wet still, but you can always blow it a bit to encourage it to dry up. When the surface of the glue goes from glossy to matte, then you know you can put it together, usually. It's not supposed to be wet. Put it into place. And fold the whole thing over. I'm gonna do one more thing before I start stitching, and that is to mark out where to put the seam. I'm gonna do a double seam to make it a bit stronger and a little bit more fancy. So I have marked out with a line on the template where to put the inner seam. And it can't be too close to the inside edge of the welt because then the axe blade can sink into the leather and reach the stitches and cut them. So I marked a line on the template that is about 3 sixteenths of an inch out from the inside edge. That's about 6 millimeters or something. Now I think that is sufficient based on uh, previous experience and gut feeling. So I'm putting it on the sheath and uh, well then you can, you can actually use a pen to follow and trace the line. A little bit more pressure than when you actually draw it. There are special tools for this as well, which I have, but I couldn't be bothered to get them out now. Or you can use the scratch sole, but you don't put the tip of it straight down into the leather. You have to drag it along. So you press into the leather through the paper of the template. And you get a pretty good visible line there. The outside seam, I don't need to mark for that, I just keep a nice even distance to the outside edge of the leather, which is no problem at all for me, because I have quite a lot of experience stitching leather, but if you're new to it, you might want to mark the outside seam as well. I mark the seam on both sides of the sheath. I just flip the template around and I can see the imprint in the paper and follow that pretty easily. So now I have a good marking on that side and on that side. So now I'm ready to do the stitching. This is my little bag of tricks or tools for better work. The ones I usually carry for stitching really. Small scissors for cutting thread, needles and all tips of various sizes, four awl handles with different tips on them, tongs for pulling the needles, that's about what I need. Uh, of course, <laughs> the thread itself. Waxed five strand linen thread for this particular thing. I use the five strand for almost everything really. And I have a clamp to put the work in. An old Swedish military clamp from back in the day when they still used and maintained their leather gear. Got it on the flea market some time, 30 years back or something. When threading the saddler's needles, you can uh, press the linen thread with your thumbnail onto your index fingertip and pull the thread back. That makes the thread flat and then it fits pretty good inside of the eye of the needle, provided the thread and the needle match each other good enough. There we go. It's always a little bit trickier doing things when people are watching. Same again. I twist it a little bit extra first to make it tightly wound at the end. Then pressing down with the thumbnail and pulling the thread back. 
I now have a flat tip which should pass through the eye like that. Then I make sure I've pulled the same amount of thread through the eye on both needles. Now the clamp comes into play. I put the sheath inside of the jaws and I have a little leather string that I pull up to tighten it and I hold it between my knees and then I have both my hands to work with. So now I can start making the holes for the seam with the awl. I'm trying to exit and hit the mark I did with the help of the template. I put my stitches about 5 or 6 millimeters apart, like 3 sixteenths of an inch. And I usually make 4 or 5 holes at the time. I'm going to start with 3 now just to get started. I'm going to do what's referred to as a saddler's stitch. I've also heard it being called shoemaker stitch. I guess that depends on if it's a saddle maker or a shoemaker that's talking about it. Anyway, putting one of the needles through, pulling the thread and then lifting both the needles to make sure I start on the middle of the thread. And I actually don't start in the first hole, I start in my second hole and then I stitch back to the first hole. And then I go forwards again, then I get a double stitch at the start which is a bit stronger. I have a special way in which I do the saddler stitch friend of mine taught me this many years ago and now I'm going to teach you. I'm going to make a few more holes here so I have something to demonstrate on. I push against my fingertip twisting it a bit to make it penetrate the leather a bit more willingly. When I can feel the all tip starting to exit, I remove my fingertip and support the leather just to the side of where the tip is exiting. And then I hook my index finger onto the other side of the leather and push it through. And I twist the all 90 degrees and pull it out. That widens the hole. Otherwise, it's more or less just a slot, since this is a flat, sword-shaped tip. But when I push through, twist it 90 degrees and pull it out, I have a much wider hole, so that's much easier to get the needles through. Now for the stitching, start with our right hand, pushing the needle through halfway, or a little bit more. With my left hand, I cross the first needle with the other one from underneath, supporting it with my uh, index finger and long finger, and put my thumb on top of that, and that pinches the first needle so I can more easily pull it out. And then I twist my hand towards me. That directs my second needle into the leather. So I push that needle through the same hole as I just pulled the first needle out from. Push it through the hole halfway. And I have left a little bit of thread on the first side that I didn't pull all the way through. Then I can pull that back to make sure I haven't put the second needle through the thread. Now twist that around the needle clockwise two times. You can do it anti-clockwise too, but the important thing is that you do it in the same direction on every stitch, otherwise it will not look great when it's done. 
and then I pull it out, pull back the loop or the thread from the first needle and tighten the stitch. Okay. Once again then, first needle in the right hand, through the hole, catch it with the second needle, cross it, pinch it, pull it out, but save a loop of thread. Twist your hand, the second needle goes back through the hole, halfway, stop there, pull back the loop of thread. I have not put the needle through the thread, I twist it, the thread around the needle, pull the needle through and tighten the stitch. If you do that on every stitch then you get a lock stitch every time. And if you twist the thread in the same direction on every stitch you get a very pretty seam where the stitching sits on a diagonal arrangement which makes it look very nice in the end. The most professional and difficult way to do this type of stitch is to never let go of either the awl or the needles. So when you use the awl you hold the needles between your index fingers and long fingers. And then you make one hole at a time, like so. Move the needles in front of the fingertips. Make the stitch. Move the needles back, hold them like cigarettes. Make the next hole. Move the needles to the fingertips again. Make the stitch. Yeah, that's sort of the professional way, but I usually make a few holes and then I just put the all away because I think that's more convenient. I'm not going to run the seam all the way out to the edge of the leather because I'm going to put a little rivet there as an extra sort of strengthening. So two more stitches and then the first inner seam is done. And when I fasten the seam, I don't make any knots or anything like that. I do back stitches instead, two or three of them.
who is usually sufficient. Depends a little bit on what you are making, of course. This is where small tongs are very convenient when you backstitch because there's a little bit tight in those holes you've already stitched through once. You can widen those holes with an awl with a round tip that doesn't cut the thread. If you go in with the, the cutting awl in the same holes again you will sever the thread. But if it's not too tight you can just push the needles through again and pull them through with your little tongs. One thing to bear in mind though when you pull your saddles and needles with tongs don't grab the needle across like that because then you will probably twist the grip a little bit when you pull and then you can break the needle. Grab the needle and pull it in its direction instead then you will almost never break a needle like that. That's two back stitches that would be enough I think. And I'll just cut the thread as close as possible. I'm gonna punch a hole for the rivet. I have a set of hole punches here. I also have one of these. I prefer the hole punches. And the rawhide mallet. This one has a lead weight inside so it packs a more powerful punch than this lighter one. This I mostly use for decorational work. For the actual riveting I have a spinning press which I mounted on a board so I can clamp it to any table I want to. So I don't need a designated table space for it. And here's a bunch of different rivets and stuff. This is from the time when I was producing a lot more stuff in the leather workshop than I am now. When we worked a lot with those historical markets. Pre-Covid actually. Because of Covid I had to find other sources of income. You don't have to use a spinning press for these. What do you call them? Pipe rivets or foot and hat rivets. You can just put them together and smack them with a hammer onto some sort of hard anvil like surface but then you get a flat hat. There are tools that you can uh, strike with a hammer too if you don't do much of it but I have this and it's very convenient. But you will probably not get this if you don't start working a little bit more with leather than just making a few axe sheets now and then. Here's a strap I prepared earlier. So now I'm gonna make slots for that to run through on the back here. So 
Now it's back to the wall of stuff to find a suitable hole punch for that, or slot punch. I also have a couple of sets over here, different sizes. That's the right size. So let's punch some slots. Need this again. And one on the other side. I don't measure for this, I just go by eye. See if it's good enough. I guess it is. This little strap ah, fits in them like that. But before I do anything else, I'm going to bevel all the edges. Should have done that before I stitched these together, of course. But for some reason, I always forget doing that when I'm showing people how I make stuff. Edge bevelers, three sizes, going with number two. You find the right angle pretty easily with these tools and it only cuts to the depth it's designed for so you can't really mess the work up. I want a clean cut around the edges where I stitched it. So I get a nice edge where the three layers of leather meet and are visible. That's the reason to not stitch too close to the edge. But have a little bit that you can cut off. The more careful you are when you glue the pieces up, the less you have to trim off when you're done of course. Very hard to get totally perfect. And it always looks better if you can just shave off a little bit when you're done. Woodworking gouges are very handy to have in the workshop, in the leather workshop. I have quite a few, so two or three of them are actually designated to live in the leather workshop more or less all the time. little bit tricky supporting the leather now when I have folded it. This doesn't affect the functionality of the sheath but it doesn't hurt if it looks a little bit nicer. It's really stupid of me really not doing this before I folded it and sewn it together. But Try to remember doing this in advance if you want to make a similar sheath yourself. I have a few of these ball post studs. It just threads together like that. I tighten it with a screwdriver. You can also put thread lock in, otherwise it will come loose and fall off. I don't have any thread lock, but I have super glue. That will also do. Just a drop in there. And screw it back together.
That's not going anywhere. I'm allowed to say stuff like that now. That we have a son and I'm a dad. If it was a tire, I'd kick it. Now I can put the strap through the slots. It's a good thing if it's a bit tight when it's new so you don't lose the strap in the forest. Now I put it on the axe. Wrap it around and mark where I need the hole for the stud. It's just here. I will cut the strap about two inches after the mark. I don't even have to take the axe out. Now of course this ball stud will not pass through that hole. We also need a slot. I'm gonna remove the axe for now. I could do it with this knife, but I also have a straight chisel. It looks nicer if you cut from the grain side. I'm gonna extend it slightly like that. That should be okay, I hope. And now it locks like that. And opens really easily. And with the axe in place. back a little bit first. It's nice to have a loose strap so you can adjust it and get the ball stud exactly where you want it and also change the strap easily if you need to. Well, there we go. That's nice and secure. Well there you go. A nice little evening project. And something I wanted to do ever since I started using this axe. I'm gonna let the sheath dry a little bit until tomorrow and then I'll put some grease on it. Apart from that, it's done. I can start using it. I hope you enjoyed watching this and I hope you found it useful if you want to make your own axe sheets. And I also hope you will subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done that. And I will see you in the next video. Until then, goodbye.